Hello guys and welcome! I hope that you're having a good day or a good morning or a good evening. This is I play 4K, aka I play AK, www.iplay4k.com. And during this video, guys, I'm going to show you Battlefield 4 running AK resolution with all kind of different presets on 2 GDX 1080 Ti video cards and 2 way SLI and Core i5 8600K overclocked to 5 GHz, 6 cores, 6 strats. This is the first Intel Core i5 with the 6 cores, 6 strats, 8 generation. This CPU will be a legend throughout the low budget very fast PCs and 2 GDX 1080 Ti guys probably maximum possible performance for the home safe environment for the 2 GDX 1080 Ti and SLI guys so again this is GP102 version 1.0 GPUs in SLI because GP102 comes in two different flavors version 1.0 and version 2.0 we're going to talk about it in a second. Let me real quick go ahead and show you the options, guys. I'm coming in real time. English is not my first language, but hopefully we're going to do a nice job. And I have a lot of experience, guys, since 1998 when it comes to overclocking and PC gaming. So 7680 by 4320, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, AK. Ultra preset completely untouched with the 4 uh times msa anti-aliasing let's go ahead and have a look shall we guys look at that amazing performance guys uh let me tell you about the display information at the left top so everything will make sense display information at the left top i call tougher version 1.0 by iplay 4k and i'm going to use it a lot in my uh, gameplays and my benchmarks and uh, comparisons of the systems so pretty much tougher T stands for the temperature on the GPU 1, GPU 2 and CPU comes in Celsius as you can see right now we have GPU 1 temperature and GPU 2 running about 55 Celsius and CPU is running about 68 Celsius then U stands for the utilization or usage and um, I'm repairing right now. Uh, usage for the GPU 1, GPU 2, usage for the VRAM, which is 10,955 megabytes right now. Usage for the system RAM, which is right now used by almost 10,200 megabytes. Total system RAM 16 gigabyte, DDR4. Clocking at 4,000 megahertz, CL17, two sticks by eight gigabytes, 16 gigabytes total. So, almost 10,000 megabytes is used on the system RAM so I'm fine on the system RAM but as you can see guys on the VRAM we're almost using 11,000 megabytes right now during all these collisions and particles this is a very heavy benchmark right now but we're still keeping 40 FPS 32 FPS sometimes dropping to 32 and back to 60 because that heavy um, load of the volumetric fog and volumetric particles for for the for that smoke was very GPU intense, guys. When it comes to computing, so the FPS dropped by a little bit. But uh, as you as you saw, the, the the minimum we saw like 32 FPS. We're still above 50 FPS. 8K resolution, everything set to ultra with four times MSA anti-aliasing, guys. This is amazing. As again, even during the heavy uh, particles, we didn't reach the uh, maximum. Uh, allocated VRAM for GTX 1080 Ti video cards guys but we were very close we reached 11,000 megabytes but the maximum uh, possible VRAM usage for the frame buffer is 11,264 megabytes and uh, keep in mind guys that you're running Battlefield 4 and 8K resolution ultra preset with 4 times anti-aliasing on 2 GTX 1080 Ti you're going to end up in the crashing sometimes and with the message VRAM overload and you saw we almost got there but hopefully not during this video capture but you will receive that game crashes, game freezes at 8K resolution in about 50% of the gameplays 
it's not going to happen in 5 minutes, it will happen in 20 minutes, but it will happen guys, or it will happen immediately. So AK resolution at ultra preset with the anti-aliasing 4 times with the 2GDX 1080Ti guys is in 2 way SLI video cards is not comfortable gameplay, okay? We have the comfortable FPS, but it's crashing, so it means the gameplay is not going to be comfortable because you don't want to play the game and then you don't want to crash, right? So, but pretty much we're running above 50 FPS average, as you can see, and running nice and smooth, and the without almost without any lag or stuttering, guys. As you can see, the milliseconds delay between the hardware and the software will be below 20 milliseconds. Right now it's 11. 18, 17, 16 milliseconds, so it's excellent. When delay between the hardware and software is below 20, it means that SLI lag will be as minimum as possible or almost not. Okay? Now I'm going to go ahead, guys, and switch. I'm going to do uh, the Ultra, but I'm going to switch to Custom and I'm going to turn down the anti aliasing. Ultra preset, no anti aliasing. Can we increase the FPS? Can we lower down the VRAM usage? And yes, we can. As you can see, FPS increased. We are right now in the 70s, FPS average. And uh, this is our like stable averages. And the VRAM usage below 9,000 megabytes. So we decreased the VRAM usage, which is nice. So we decreased the chances of the VRAM overload. So the game is not going to crash. So the, guys, this is ready. AK resolution, ultra preset, no anti-aliasing is ready for you. And you, you can see even with a lot of particles, you're going to be like 65, 68, but mostly above 70 FPS average, which is incredible and amazing. And running smooth and beautiful, guys, with the delay below 20 milliseconds, so there is no lag and stuttering and stuff like that. It's running nice. AK resolution, guys. So if you have AK resolution screen, this is ready for you to go. Add the ultra preset without the anti aliasing even with two GTX 1080 Ti guys and SLI. And keep in mind that each GTX 1080 Ti guys video card has the GP102 codename GPUs by NVIDIA that is the same GPUs that can be found in the Titan X Pascal GPU architecture, the first generation of the Titan X Pascals. And it's also GP102 and has the same CUDA cores and everything the same. But Titan XP is the second generation of Titan X, uh, Titan, uh, X Pascal GP architecture, guys. Having 256 CUDA cores more and it's definitely performing way faster than GTX 1080 Ti, guys, video card. Or Titan X Pascal GP architecture. Titan XP video cards perform faster. So they... If, Whoever saying it's equal or GTX 1080 Ti is faster, you guys do not believe him because it's a lot. Titan XP's guys is way faster than GTX 1080 Ti guys video cards uh, because 256 CUDA cores more and can be used, but uh, GPU named as the same GPU 102. So it doesn't make any sense. Nvidia Braining Manager or Nvidia Braining Office I should be fired. Should be probably named GP101. But anyway, Titan XP is a little bit faster, so AK resolution will be comfortable with Titan XP's because AK resolution at Ultra with four times MSA will be almost comfortable at 8K resolution, guys. But sometimes games still will be crashing. So 12 gigabyte of VRAM is still not enough for AK perfect, uh, comfortable resolution experience. I, I would say 13 gigabyte will be way enough. But they're not gonna make 13 gigabyte of VRAM, so we're looking for 16 gigabyte of the Titan Turing guys, and two of them, and SLI. Hopefully, Nvidia Link will support DirectX 9, 10, and 11 because Titan Volta didn't support SLI through the Nvidia Link DirectX 9, 10, 11. But Titan Volta has Nvidia Link SLI Bridge version 1.0, and Turing GPU architecture video cards RTX 2080, RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, Turing Titan will use NVIDIA Link Bridge for SLI version 2.0 and hopefully, let's cross our fingers, it's going to support DirectX 9, 10 and 11, not only DirectX 12, because as again, Titan Volta was limited to only DirectX 12 guys and SLI support through the NVIDIA Link, keep that in mind. 
but Nvidia Link and Titan Volta was 10 gigabyte second version, version 1.0, and Nvidia Link on the Turing GPU architecture RTX 2080, RTX 2080 Ti video cards is 20 gigabyte a second, guys, which is version 2.0, and maybe Nvidia going to write drivers that are going to support RTX 9, 10, 11. Let's just hope for it. Otherwise, RTX 2080 Ti video cards, RTX 2080, and uh, Titan Turing will be useless for AK resolution folks because SLI is not going to support Battlefield, which is DirectX 11 API, as you can see, guys. So we will see, but anyways, running 78, 70, 70 FPS, 69, 70, wow, 75 FPS, 76. Guys, this is the ultra preset. AK resolution, no anti-aliasing. This is amazing. 80 FPS. Let me real quick show you the actions probably inside somewhere. Let's see. This is from the vehicle action. Mm. Guys, I'm coming in real time. English is not my first language, so please forgive me about any years. But as again, I'm... I have a great information and experience with you guys to share. I'm a gamer since 1998 and uh, I spent about six months with two GTX 1080 Ti guys in SLI and I spent about six months with two Titan XP's in SLI so I have a lot of information, useful information for you to share so you can make the right choices guys. Anyways, 50, sometimes 50, 56, we constantly at 20, 25 megahertz, guys. 99% load on the GPU. So excellent SLI scalability. This is the best what it can get with two GTX 1080 Ti, guys, and SLI video cards. 85, look at this. Let me enter this scene and then I'm going to switch the preset to high. And maybe I'm going to also show you the preset to medium, which doesn't make no sense. But just in case, so we can compare with the future um, systems and future video cards. Guys, the purpose of this video is not the gameplay, the purpose of this video is to show you the performance stats. Okay, there is a lot of particles will be here, a lot of bombing and stuff like that. Let's see if FPS will will drop. The the lowest FPS that we saw was, was like, what, 36 FPS during the Ultra 8K resolution preset, Ultra with the anti-aliasing 4-way, and it was a lot of bunch of smoke everywhere, was blowing stuff up and stuff like that, particles flying in the air. I'm pretty sure we're not gonna see this at this ultra preset without the anti-aliasing because Pascal GPU architecture has no problems guys as you can see to compute this tasks in Battlefield 4 at 8K resolution without the anti-aliasing preset it just even 90 sometimes 87 so it's so beautiful FPS guys right now I'm switching to high preset and um, Let's go ahead and have a look, shall we? High preset, guys, completely. And right now we're running high preset. Let's go ahead and have a look. Can we increase the FPS uh, from moving from ultra without the antalyzing into the high? It, theoretically, we should increase the FPS by a little bit. Because the ultra and high preset, not a big difference. But ultra preset using the anti-aliasing. But we just switched from the ultra preset without the anti-aliasing. So we should increase by a little bit. As you can see, it's not the case yet. Kind of the case. I just saw 93 FPS and stuff like that. So we increased by about 3 FPS, I would say. 3, 5 FPS maximum. Guys, keep in mind, as again, I'm recording today with the NVIDIA Shadow Play technology. So without the recording on the same computer in real time. Because I'm recording on the same computer in real time. For those who don't know what is the shadow play technologies recording a software by nvidia that using cuda cores using your video card and recording almost lag free videos of gameplay and desktop videos so it's recording real time guys so without the recording in real time please add three fps to the laptop two three fps it took like two fps but just in case add three fps to get for sure the fps without the recording but pretty crazy FPS at high settings, guys. We're running a lot of, as you can see, volumetric particles going on right now. A lot of smoke going on. But still, FPS is very high. All those details, all this grass right here, it's real deal, guys. AK resolution. Details are 
amazing as you can see and um, full server it's multiplayer as you can see Galmut Railway map which is very bu big 60 large 64 bit uh, 64 bit 64 players map yeah it's just unbelievable the FPS is incredible guys I mean the FPS is just on another level check it out I mean, it just simply cannot get better. Right now, a lot of smoke right now in front of us, and FPS is still 80 FPS, 78 FPS average. Alright guys, now I'm going to real quick go ahead and switch to medium, and we're about to wrap it up this video. Keep in mind that I'm going to have 7K resolution, 5K resolution, 4K resolution videos over iPlay4K YouTube channel, iPlay4K.com. Don't forget to check it out as well, and in the end of this video, guys, I'm going to show you the videos to watch as well as I'm going to include in the video description 4k 7k 5k 8k resolutions on the even on the four-way Titan X Maxwell GPU architecture in the slide guys the previous GPU architecture Pascal and then Maxwell was the previous GPU architecture I have four video cards Titan X the 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 top dogs previous generation video cards in SLI, 4-way SLI guys for your 8K resolution go ahead and check it out Battlefield 4 video is going to be a great video for you to compare but as again 2 GTX 1080 Ti guys is not matched to 4-way Titan X Maxwell GPU architecture in 4-way SLI unfortunately I, I thought it's going to be equal but it's not they're weaker than 4-way uh, Titan X Maxwell GPU architecture but they're scaling well but even when they're scaling well, like excellent, they're still not enough to match 4 Titan X Maxwell GP architecture guys in SLI performance. And too bad this video card doesn't have 12 GB of uh, VRAM. Guys, the two Turing Titans will be excellent vi video setup ever. It means that it will be ready for AK resolutions for sure without the RTX. Uh, hopefully it's going to come with 16 gigabyte of VRAM then you're set to go and I believe two Titan Turings will be good to go with RTX enabled at 4k resolution at anything about 80 100 FPS average but as again this is my predictions if you're watching this video after September 19 2018 do not get mad I'm, I was just predicting guys based on my experience let me know how was my prediction. The video cards will go on sale in the stores in two days, but there is no benchmarks available yet. And today is September 18, 2018, guys. This, by the way, this system that you're watching right now is going to be an excellent system to purchase as used parts on eBay from five-star uh, rated seller in the end of 2019 because the prices of the GTX 1080 Ti probably will be $300, $250 per card used but like new. You wanna purchase two of them guys, but keep in mind that in SLI you don't wanna run two of them in on air because they're going to throttle itself down to 1800 MHz and your FPS will be by 10 FPS lower that you can see right now, okay? By the way, which is incredible FPS for the AK resolution. Medium preset, guys. Unbelievable. Over 100 FPS. So if you have AK resolution screen, 120 Hz. And if you probably do, you're probably going to have two Turing GPU architectures. But anyways, two GTX 1080 Ti, guys, and SLI ready for AK 120 Hz. But your settings will be medium preset, okay? And make sure that your video card is overclocked and there is no thermal throttling. Uh, to 1800 megahertz as I just told you two of them on the air guys will thermal throttle down itself to 1800 megahertz and you're going to lose about 10 FPS and believe me I tested I have the videos maybe I'm going to upload it maybe not but just I'll show you the videos on the air and on water I'm probably going to upload a few benchmarks to show you the but th there is a difference guys and uh, if you're going to run them on SLI you want to make sure the first video card is on water like I'm having right now and you can buy extension over the Corsair on GTX 1080 or GTX 1080 Ti. They're both going to work. And get yourself a cooler, a closed water cooling system look like um, H55i, something like that. You're going to be good to go. 120 millimeter radiator, 120 millimeter fan on the first card. And the second card can be an air, as I'm running right now, guys. 
and uh, as you can see this is excellent stuff you don't even have to put the second video card on air on water but if you have the budget put both of them on water but if you have the budget you're probably going to go with Turing guys but if you're smart and if you're gonna get a great deal from a guy who wanna get rid of the G GTX 1080 Ti guys video cards and it's going to be a lot in the end of 2018 and a lot of in the 2019 year on eBay check it out build yourself a system like this guys for total 1000 bucks and you will be set to go in any games at 4k resolution over 100 FPS average guys without the RTX technologies set to go okay this is excellent system for you and um, you simply cannot go wrong with Core i5 8600K overclocked to 5 gigahertz for gaming but keep in mind guys this CPU without the deleting is ready for games at 5 gigahertz you can clock it and you can see my temperature is kind of low but it's not deleted yet this is not deleted temperatures and it's going to be fine but when you're going to start video encoding uh, or when you're gonna do the 3d rendering over two minutes you're going to reach 100 Celsius when your CPU test will be 100% utilize utilization on your CPU and then when you need to delete your CPU guys and uh, you definitely need to delete your CPU for 5 gigahertz stable Core i5-8600K guys 90% of them will require deletion some of them will run low voltage but 90% will run 1.4 volts 1.39 volts to make it stable 5 gigahertz and you want to keep it stable and to keep it stable and cool you want to delete it and you want to use the liquid thermal compound uh, paste guys and um, I'm done right here guys so we're done let me show you the systems and that we're running today and we're going to wrap it up uh, but anyways uh, Maybe we're going to have a VRM overload message. We didn't. Okay, let me get back to the windows. Anyways, guys, you saw that uh, almost overloaded our VRM, but you will overload your VRM. So, you know, if you think that you're not going to, you will at AK at Ultra Preset with 4 times MSA, guys. But everything else, you're going to be fine with GDX 1080 Ti video cards. Two of them and two way SLI guys. As you can see, five gigahertz CPU running 50 multipliers, 100 megahertz base clock. Cache was running at 4,000 megahertz, synchronized with the DDR4 memory, which was running as well at 4,000 megahertz. Motherboard ASUS Maximus 10 Hero. Memory 2,000 times 2, 4,000, CL17, uh, but actual memory was 4,500 megahertz, CL19, but it's unstable, it's Corsair Vengeance, unstable on this board with this CPU. So 4,000 megahertz is the maximum possible stable frequency, CL17, but it's producing even better score, I believe, than was before, because CL17, guys, low run timing, which is delay less on timing. So graphics will be by gigabyte as again, both video cards, first video card was on water, the second video card was on air, Triple Fan Design Edition. Both of them was Aero Series Extreme Edition 11G. Micron chips, GDDR5X. Uh, total VRAM frame buffer was 11,264 megabytes. But before you're going to reach this, your video card will crash with the VRAM overload buffer after 11,000 megabytes. So keep that in mind, guys. All right. Let me show you how this CPU is benched. And um, this is how it benched. It's very 5,000 5, megabytes stable. And this is how it's being, guys. Let me real quick. It's, I believe it's right here. Yeah, the single thread was 597 score and multi thread was 3487. Let me compare with different systems for you. And we're going to wrap it up, guys. This is my CPU. This is the system that it compares. This is a single thread, guys, application. Benchmark, check it out. I'm so fast, like unbelievable. And uh, let me real quick go ahead and show it to you the multi trading applications. And uh, right here, unbelievable score for my CPU. My CPU is on top, guys, as you can see. Unbelievable. And uh, this is how it scored under Intel Extreme Utility. This is the score, which is one of the best for Core i5, by the way, so far. Look at this crazy score, guys. 
1948 marks all right guys well thank you so much guys for watching smash that like button a lot of time money energy was invested and uh subscribe for more great videos right now i'm putting for you cool videos to watch go ahead and check them out it's going to be a nice video for you to watch as again have a great day smash that like button positive comments and i will see you till the next time